A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid. Hey boys and girls, Pastor Steve here. Welcome to Kids Church. Today, boys and girls, we're gonna conclude our Bible study on God's love for us. So make sure you go grab your Bibles, open them up and turn them to 1 John chapter three, and I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4, 9 and 10. Hi kids, let's sing I'm in the Lord's Army. Do you want to be in the Lord's Army? Then sing with us. One, two, one, two, three. Four. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry. Shoot the artillery I may never fly or the enemy But I'm in the Lord's army I may never march in the infantry Ride in the cavalry Shoot the artillery I may never fly or the enemy But I'm in the Lord's army I'm in the Lord's army Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir! Together, wonderful to be. Yes. 
And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Now he who keeps His commandments abides in Him, and He in Him. And by this we know that He abides in us, by the Spirit whom He has given us. 1 John 3, 23-24 Welcome back, everyone. Do you have your Bibles with you? Good. Well, if you do, let's open them up to the book of 1 John chapter 3. And when you find it, boys and girls, we're going to pray. So 1 John chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 23 and 24 together. But before we do, let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you again, Lord, for this time that you have given to us to come together, to open up your word, to hear from you, and to be reminded of how much you love us. We thank you for all that you've done for us, for sending your son Jesus to this earth to die for our sins so we could have eternity in heaven with you. And even here on earth, Lord, we can have that personal relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. And we ask now, Lord, that you would go before us, that you would bless our time, and that we would be able to pay attention and to hear what it is that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's look at our memory verse one more time, boys and girls. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, it says this, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. Now, boys and girls, do you remember what this word commandment means? A commandment is a rule that we're given to follow, to obey. So God has given us a commandment. One, that we should believe on his son, Jesus Christ. And two, that we should love one another. 
And in our study today, boys and girls, we're going to talk more about what this means, what it is to believe, and what we are to do to love. Now, this is our last Bible study, boys and girls, when talking about God's love for us. Now, just because it's our last Bible study doesn't mean that it's the least or that it's not important. As a matter of fact, boys and girls, this may be the most important study that we will do in this entire series. Let's look what God's Word has to say. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 7 and 8, it says, Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Now, boys and girls, we're being told about a commandment, a commandment that we are to follow. And in this commandment, if we're following these commandments, boys and girls, people are going to know that we are his disciples. People are going to know that we know Jesus because of what we are doing and how we are living our lives. Now, boys and girls, I have a question to ask you. What commandments are being talked about here? In 1 John chapter 3 and in 1 John chapter 2, what is being said? Well, let's look at a few more passages of Scripture, which I think are going to help us understand what these commandments are. In John chapter 13 and verse 34, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And then in John chapter 3 and verse 36, it says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And then in Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 34, it says, Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but He, and to love Him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him. And then in John chapter 15 and verse 12, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. In all of these scripture verses, boys and girls, in John chapter 13, verse 34, we are told to love one another. In John chapter 3 and verse 36, we are told to believe in the Son. In Mark chapter 12, 28 through 34, we're told to love God and love others. 
And in John chapter 15 and verse 12, we're told to love one another. In all of these scripture verses, boys and girls, what two words describe what the commandments are? Believe and love. Now, in all of our studies, boys and girls, we've been concentrating and focusing on the word love. And so we know what the word love means. But what does the word believe mean? Let's spend just a few more minutes talking about this word, this word believe. Boys and girls, if you believe right now that as you're sitting there watching and listening to this Bible study, that a huge gigantic bomb is going to explode in 30 seconds, what would you do? If you truly believe that a bomb would explode, what would your actions be? Would you just chill for a little bit and hang out? Would you take a, a nap? Would you talk about it with your friends for a little bit? Would you go and grab a Snickers bar and sit down and eat? Or would you get up and run for your life? Yeah, if we truly believe that that was going to happen, that a bomb was going to explode, we would get up and we would run as fast as we can and as far away as we can. Now, what if someone told you that the food on your plate would make you sick if you ate it? and you believe that person, what would you do? Would you take your fork and your knife and would you examine the food very carefully? Would you ask the rest of your family members whether you should eat it or not? Would you taste just a little bit of it? Or would you pick up your plate and throw all of the food away? Yeah, if you really believed what that person told you, you would probably throw your food away. Now, what if there was someone that had lots and lots of money and they told you that if you went and picked up 10 pieces of trash in 30 seconds, they would give you $100 and you really believed that person, what would you do? Yeah, you would go as fast as you can and pick up as many pieces as you can so you could get that $100, wouldn't you? You see, boys and girls, the point is that if we really, truly believe something, you're going to take some sort of action and do something. Now, let me ask you another question, boys and girls. Do you believe in Jesus. What does it mean to truly believe on the name of God's only Son, Jesus Christ? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Boys and girls, do you understand what this scripture is telling you? It's telling us that God's spirit lives and dwells in us. Those of us who are his children, those of us who have asked him to be Lord of, his, of our lives, he has come in and he lives inside of us. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Boys and girls, this is a commandment from God himself. This is something that we are to obey. We are to believe on the name of his son, his son, Jesus, the one who came and gave his life for you and for me. And not only are we to believe, boys and girls, but we are to love one another. And in verse 24, it says, now he who keeps his commandments abides in him 
and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Boys and girls, we are told that if we keep his commandments, that we abide in him, that we walk with him, that we have fellowship with him, that we are staying close to him. And boys and girls, the proof that we abide in him is that he has given us his spirit. Boys and girls, we are told to believe in Jesus. We are told to love one another. And when we do, boys and girls, there is proof from our lives. And one of those proofs, boys and girls, is how we are abiding in him, how we are living and showing others that he is living in us, that his spirit dwells in us. And in just a few minutes, boys and girls, we're going to come right back and we're going to continue talking about God's love for us and what it means to abide in Christ. And we're going to look at, boys and girls, some of the fruit that comes from our lives when we abide in Him. Well, hello, laddies and lassies. It's me, Mr. Wallace, again. I'm still hanging around my farm and still tending to my sheep. William is still causing me some problems. He's my favorite sheep. I, I named him after myself. Don't tell anybody. But we're going to be looking at our first activity today. That's going to be a hidden message. Let's look at this. Well, if you look at the numbers corresponding to the letters, look, we got give... You, your, give your li life, yeah, give your life to Jesus. Look at that. Look, you give your life to Jesus. What a wonderful thing. We need to do that, don't we? Look at that. Look at the little fellows on the cross right there. They're crossing that bridge. Jesus is our bridge to heaven. Without him, we wouldn't be able to speak to God. What a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, anyways, I think that's about it for me today. I do got to get back to me farm. William is trying to kick over some buckets right now, and I need to, to go make sure that he doesn't do that anymore. All right, I'll see you all later. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye. Welcome back, boys and girls. Are you ready to continue learning about God's love for us? Well, boys and girls, do you remember back in Bible study number three, when we talked about the promise that was given to us in John chapter 16, verses five through 11, we were talking about our need for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to live a life that is well-pleasing to the Lord. And so boys and girls, we now know that when we keep his commandments, we are abiding in Christ. And we know that we abide in him because he gave us his spirit. But boys and girls, what is the proof that we have the spirit of God living inside of us? Well, we're told in Galatians chapter five and verse 22, that the fruit of the spirit is love. You see, boys and girls, when a person is overflowing with the Holy Spirit, God's divine love comes rushing out of our lives like a mighty torrent of living water. When we are abiding in Christ, when we are walking with Christ, it's evident, it's obvious to everyone around us that we are walking in Him because of our love for one another. You see, boys and girls, as we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, His love comes into our lives and then it flows from our lives to others. And it's evident, it's obvious that we are walking with Christ. In the book of John chapter four, verses five through 14, Jesus has an encounter 
with someone very special. Jesus went directly to this well in Samaria and he talked to a woman. And it says in verse five, it says, he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And then a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink for me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews had no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Then the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Boys and girls, here Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman. And Jesus is going to use the well that she is drawing water from as an example. And as he is sitting there. The Bible tells us that he's wearied from his journey. He asked this woman, a Samaritan woman, who Jews and Samaritans did not get along. But Jesus had something very important that he wanted to do. He had a divine appointment with this woman. And as he's sitting there and she's about to draw water, Jesus asked for a drink from her. And she says, why do you ask from a, for a drink from me, and then begins to explain to Jesus about who this well belonged to. And Jesus then said, if you knew who it was that asked for a drink, different story. Because see, Jesus is God. And Jesus had something very special that he wanted to give her. You see, This water that you were going to drink from this well is water that you're going to have to go back to and get more of when you become tired and thirsty again. But Jesus says, I have water that I can give to you that when you drink of it, that when you taste of it, you will never, ever thirst again. It's water that's going to spring up into everlasting life. You see, boys and girls, this is the water that Jesus is talking about. This is what we need for our lives, that living water. Now, love, boys and girls, has been defined for us in two places in the New Testament. We've already looked at one of the places in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And if you haven't listened to the last few Bible studies, go back and read and listen what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Bible tells us that we can have all kinds of gifts, but if we don't have love, it profits nothing. And then it tells us what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. And then it tells us that love doesn't boast itself, doesn't parade itself, and goes back and explains what love is not. And boys and girls, we are to love one another as Christ has loved us. And as we're walking with Christ, as we are abiding in him, that love is going to flow through our lives to others. Then in the second place, we see another definition of what love is. And we see that in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, which says, but the fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. The Bible is telling us that the fruit of the Spirit is love. When we are walking with Christ, the evidence of His Spirit living in us is love. And from that love, we have joy and peace, long-suffering or patience. Kindness is shown, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The evidence of the Spirit of God dwelling in our lives is the love that we have for one another. And we are showing that love to others how we live our lives. Boys and girls, this is the kind of love that God wants to flow forth from your life, from my life. A river of living water. Boys and girls, through these studies, we have looked at the biblical description of a Christian, of a person who loves God and loves others. Remember our very first Bible study? We opened it up and we talked about what it means to be a counterfeit Christian. Someone who says that they're a believer, but there's no evidence of being a believer in their lives. There's no love for one another. There's no love for God. That counterfeit Christian, instead of showing love for one another, is the one who says, don't worry about other people, only worry about yourself. Boys and girls, is that what God has told us to do? Are we only to worry about ourselves? No. God's message is clear. Here in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we are told, we are commanded that we are to love one another. Boys and girls, are you a counterfeit Christian? Or is God's love flowing from your life to others? Are you more worried about yourself or are you worried about others? Are you selfish or do you have a love like God has for all of those around you? Boys and girls, the great theme of the Bible is that of God's love towards you and towards me. The proof that we believe in Jesus is the love that we have for one another. Boys and girls, God's desire is to have that personal, intimate relationship with each one of us, with you and with me. God has done everything that's needed to allow you to have fellowship with him. Boys and girls, he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And he wants you to believe, to abide, to obey, and to love. May God help each one of us, boys and girls, to love. May God help each one of us to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And may he help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Let's pray, boys and girls. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for demonstrating your love to us. 
We thank you, Lord, for doing all that was necessary, all that is needed for us to have that intimate, personal, loving relationship with you. And Lord, I pray that each one of us would believe in your son, Jesus Christ, would abide, would walk with you, and that we would love one another. Lord, help us. Help us and help, our, help us to have our lives demonstrate that to others. May there be proof, may there be evidence, may there be fruit that comes from our lives of our relationship with you. God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for these Bible studies that you've given to us to show us how much you love us. May we love you, Father, and may we love others. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. And together we said, amen. Well, boys and girls, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.